Hey everyone, I'm Robbie Herring and I'm here tonight for Live with Prima. Um, tonight we're going to be making this birdhouse that is a metal birdhouse that Prima makes. And we've just decorated it up and added some fun stuff. But we're going to start with a few announcements. And first of all, y'all know at CHA, um, they're doing full releases on the Prima blog. And that's prima.typepad.com. Um, you definitely want to be watching, I mean, so many really neat things coming your way. And then next week, we have Frank um, on Tuesday and Miranda on Thursday. So that's about all I have for announcements. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And I've already shown you this a little bit. Um, hi, Shannon. This is the Prima Birdhouse. And you can see I've added glitter in the new snow or the snow paste that I think it was released in the summer. Lots of wintry looking things. These are vellum flowers, little bird. We've got loomies. So, but my favorite part of this one for tonight is, is that I have used the new molds. And these are IOD molds. And I have accented the, the house with that and added an embellishment. And I've even got a little bit down here. So we're going to start out and I'm going to show y'all the molds and how to use them and tell you a little bit more about why I'm so excited about them. First of all, they are super high quality. Whoops, I moved my mouse and now I have weird stuff. Okay, so this is one of them. Let me open it up and show you. These are, and this is number, I'm going to try to keep up with the numbers tonight too. So if you, like I said, if you want to know, ask me again. It's 814-823. And these, like I said, are made by IOD. And they have done some beautiful things. And I chose to use one that I could use the clock as an embellishment and use one of these uh, as my, as the, on the gables of my house. So you can see they're very thick. If you go on the blog, um, we just did a blog post and people have shown all different ones and ways to use them. And Sharon even used them to make candy. And so, as you know, if you can even make candy with them, you probably can come up with some great ideas. And then Prima also came out with paper clay. And I've already used mine, so I'm going to show you all the package. And this is number 814991. And I'm keeping it in a Ziploc bag to keep it nice and moist really easy to use. I had never used, I really don't think I've ever used a mold before this showed up in the mail, much less paper clay. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take some of this paper clay and you're going to condition it a little bit because it's a little bit hard when you when you first get it out. And of course mine's a little bit harder because I've been using it and I all, don't always put it up um, as quickly as I should. So if you warm it up a little bit, and do it this, you know, get it conditioned really well. Doesn't take long, because if it took too long, I would have done it before. <laughs> and so it starts to get more pliable. And once it's pliable, I'm going to show you all how I did the borders, because this is pretty self-explanatory, the clock is. What I did was, and this also gets it a little more pliable, I took it like this, and I rolled it so I didn't have to manipulate it a whole lot, because I want to push it in um, without and be able to really keep this design. The other thing is, like I said, I'm sure there's a million people that have done this. I personally hadn't. And these are so super intricate. Let me show you the, the details in this. And these details definitely stay in. But I was having a little trouble getting mine out nice and easy. So what I did, let me get this little going to use this so I can show y'all how much that I did. I took just, I happened to have some baby powder and I thought, well, it's worth a try. So I got it. Let's hope if you open it though. So I put it in baby, I put baby powder in it. And at first I was truly like banging the thing. So there would be just a little bit left. Well, through trial and error, I found out that it's better not to really tap it off. Just kind of dump it out. And leave yourself, I may, I may have even dumped a little much, but leave yourself, you know, enough to truly coat down in those details. And because I pushed it a little, I got a little much, I'm going to add a tiny bit more. And so this won't matter because I have done it and done it and done it. And this does not cause any trouble to the paper clay hardening. It doesn't cause any trouble at all um, with the color. It, it dries white. 
And then what I did was I took this, let's, let's put it over on this side, and I pushed it in. And you will see on this one, I did not, I may not have got quite enough uh, clay out, but I did not really want this section. Um, I wanted mine to be a bit thinner for the detail on the birdhouse. And you're going to smash it in. And you can see I'm just kind of manipulating it as I go. I'm trying to get as much of the border off as I can, but you really, like this overlap, but you really don't need to worry about that. Um, while it's wet, it's very, very easy to cut off. And I'm going to show you all how I did that because I actually did that on all these pieces. So here you go. We've got it all in. You can see I'm not, I'm not being perfect. Like I said, you can come here and you can pull some of this off if you want. But there's really not any real need because what you cut off, you can roll up and put back in your bag. And then let me show you. And with that powder, it pops right out. And here is what we have. Now, I'm going to tell you, let me get the little bit, blow on it a little bit and get the little bit of powder off. I think y'all can see how detailed that really is. Just beautiful detailed. Um, and, uh, these you need to work a little bit in advance and I'll tell you why because they do take a while to dry. Now what I found was you can cut them with Tim Holtz scissors or probably uh, pretty much anything. You probably put, cut them with any but the, the, the longer they dry when they truly are dry they're very firm. So I found it easier to go ahead and just slice off. I should have got a different putty knife this part that I'm not going to use. And you can see it's real easy. And even doing this with the tiny bit of powder that's still left on it, I still rolled it up, stuck it back in the bag, used it again. It wasn't a problem. And what I did was I found that if I put it on, um, I'm sure, like I said, sure there's a million ways, but what I did was I put it on parchment paper and let it dry. Now this little bit, I didn't even worry about that kind of thing because you can go in with even a fingernail file or just a very fine sandpaper. Once this is dry, you can sand it, but that is all there is to using these. So you can uh, make as tons of them. And of course I've made them ahead because they do take several hours, I would say, to dry. So let me wipe this off real quick, get my powder off of here, and I'll bring you out the ones that are done. And I meant to bring a fingernail file over here so I could show you. But I have some of the, like a block. And that one I found was really easy to use. It's very, very uh, fine. Didn't cause a lot of problems, you know, making it like break or whatever. And here's the ones that are done. And I've already cut them to go on the birdhouse. And you can see that the back is not real smooth because for this project I'm hiding that. And most of them you will. But you can even sand this down. And here's the little clock. I think we got focus. Okay. Uh-oh. My thing isn't scrolling with new messages. Give me just one sec. I promised I'd keep up. Okay. I think we're good. I think I don't see any questions that I missed. But like I said, keep asking. I'll catch them. All right. So hopefully that was pretty or explained well enough that y'all get it. I'm going to put this aside since I've already done this. And again, since I was on my own tonight, I started thinking that I probably ought to work a little bit ahead. So I've done a couple of things ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and show y'all. I have put the glitter on this, and this is, this is the sterling glitter, and we're going to use some more of it tonight. And if y'all haven't used this, it's not really silver. It's, it's almost got a taupey tone to it. It's almost like if your sterling starts to uh, tarnish just a tiny bit and it's that real soft, soft brownie silver color, only this is beautiful and sparkly. So I love this color because it goes so well with browns and blues and anything like that. So I, all I did was use soft gel, put it on, and let it dry. No biggie. Top, I did some from the top and some from the bottom and left some of this beautiful distressed look that was already on the birdhouse. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out the inside. Because the other thing that I have to show you, hang on, 
the packaging. I've already taken off the back, and if you haven't used these, they come with a metal back. And I have already covered it with paper because I figured that was something pretty easy to do. But I do want to show you this beautiful paper I used. Let me move that out of the way. This is a, this is a paper. It is, let's see, it's Salvage District Collection Palais Royale, and it's 847524. This line is stunning. And the back, you can see, has the letters on it and words, and the this side is all the beautiful. It's even got the, uh, the prints and the script and love it. So all I did was is put this piece of metal from the back that's already done, trace it and glue it down. But I wanted to have that done because we're going to color it and I wanted it to be dry to save on drying time. So here we go. So that is the thing. And so you can see on the back the little clips. Now I used the Lumis and these are the one meter Lumis. And this is 584764. Okay. If you haven't used these before, you you really need to, these are like not very expensive. They're so versatile. You can stick them on your layouts. I love using them on altered projects, pretty much anything. And if, if you haven't seen them, I think most of y'all have probably seen them before. They're they're pretty tough little things. All right, hang on, let me pull it. And all you gotta do is take out, open them up. I'm gonna go ahead and do it because I'll forget otherwise. Whoops, that one doesn't even have one in it. Usually they have a little thing in it uh, to keep them from turning on, but for some reason, maybe I opened it previously to play with it and see. Yeah, these are ready to go. And here's how they light up. And what I did with these, because we're gonna work from the inside out, I started out by gluing this to the back because I wanted it to be stuck down. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use a little hot glue tonight, but I'm also going to use Fabri-Tac so that it'll hold long term. But in the interest of speed, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, hot glue too. So it'll definitely stick for us. And if y'all have watched me to, before, you know I'm dangerous with these hot glue guns. So I'm going to try not to burn myself. Okay. And I just glued it to the back to get started. And my glue gun gets so hot that it actually even takes it a second to grab hold. Okay, and now they're on, but I'm gonna keep them off. Okay, and then this, all we did was, I'm gonna put it back in here, whoops. And I'm gonna make the Lumis in the front. And I'm gonna go ahead, oops, helps you do it correctly. I'm gonna attach it. I can get it in there. I don't have it open enough. All right, never mind. Let's do it this way. I can't seem to get it in there, and I remember that I didn't put it in there anyway. I <laughs> am remembering as I go, obviously. I'm going to pull these open. On the top, I didn't put them in. I saved these little things to help hold the loomies. And now that I think about it, I remember that. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to put um, a little bit of Fabri-Tac and hot glue to make sure that it sticks for us tonight. The Fabri-Tac will hold it beautifully, um, but with the metal, it needs to set a little longer. So let me add a tiny bit of hot glue. On each of the sides. And I will tell you, I did a CHA project that's not released yet, and I actually got hot glue all over these Lumis. And I wouldn't recommend it, but I will tell you, they held. They did not. It didn't, uh, it didn't ruin them. They still worked. Okay. And I'm just going to glue this and use the things on the back that are lower to go ahead and attach. There we go. So that is all we got to do to the back. And so we, whoops, if I don't get the glue off me. Okay. And I'm looking to see, do we have any questions? I think, I think my chat is keeping up. Remember, if y'all need anything, please ask me. And for those of y'all who are watching it on playback, we have a live chat. So we'd love to have you join us. Okay. Now I'm going to show y'all a little bit. I keep hitting the back. So that's what's making them light up. What I did was, is I pulled it and I added, I've got a little glue hanging over in here, so I don't need to add any more. 
And I'm just going to push this into the glue and let it kind of grab hold. And what I did was, is I also went in these, hang on one second. It's a little harder to do because it's harder to see from this angle for me. And I used this just to kind of tuck them down where I, where I needed them to help hold them. You can add all the glue you want and put them back in there. And then I put a little bit of glue, and I'm going to go ahead and use hot glue at the top. No, I'm not because that glue gun doesn't reach in there. And put a little bit of glue at the top. And so it'll start drying. I'm going to put a little bit over here too. All right. And I just made them go around the inside of the bird cage. I didn't really care that the wire might show a bit. Um, if you want to, you could actually, you know, take more time tucking them in. That didn't that didn't bother me. Let me get, here's my nonstick scissors to help me. Things aren't. It's going to take just a sec to set. And nothing is going right tonight. Let me get this one done. <laughs> I'm laughing though because I've got I've got twinkling flashing lights tonight because of the it's laying on that. I didn't turn it off well enough. And then I tucked it in down here a bit. And let me get my scissors and let that hold a bit. I really thought about doing this ahead of time, but I know I'm always curious when I'm watching a show how you got it to stick. I think it's finally starting to stick. Okay, let's get this one. And you can tuck these in however you'd like. And then, so you can see it just goes around. You can see a little bit of wire. Once it's a little bit drier, I might smooth that out a little bit. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and leave it. And then what I did, though, is I did not put this everywhere else. I saved this, and when I added the bird... I end, what I did was, is I tucked it all into the arrangement. And let me show you this. Let me turn this one on for you. So you can see he's sitting on all the lights. And I loved the look of that. So that's why I did not use them all. Thank you, Janelle. I, these little lights are just, like I said, I, I have really bought a whole bunch. <laughs> I'm not sure how many packages. Um, the birdhouse is made out of metal. It is by Prima. Um, I, you know, I didn't give you all that number. Let me tell you what it is. It is 961336. Okay, so here we have that. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add these. And like I said, I went ahead and I cut these in advance just to make things fast and easy. You can see, and I'm going to show you at this angle, I have to look. They're not exactly straight. They're not going to dry exactly perfect. And that's okay because they really, you don't want to like try to bend them, they'll snap on you. But like to use them with something backing them up is not a problem. You can add a little bit of weight. Let me put this here. I'll make it more even. So, and all I did was use Fabri-Tac again. My, my uh, bottle is whistling. <laughs> and let's just put it here. This will be easier. And my husband probably has like a miter saw or whatever, those things. I never can't even say it correctly, but I don't. So I eyeball this and y'all will see that it is not going to be exactly a perfect thing. And it's going to, I can add some pressure here. It's not going to break them because I have that metal base behind it. But like I said, don't add a lot of pressure because although it is tough and strong, it still it feels like clay or dried clay, and it's, it is a paper clay. So you can snap it if you're not at least a tiny bit careful. I'm going to make sure this really grabs hold because we're going to be getting it a tiny bit wet. <laughs> I don't know what you're buying before oh, the Lumis before they're gone forever. <laughs> you do need to buy some before they're gone forever. But I don't think they're I don't think they're going anywhere or if they are, I haven't heard, but if if I hear they're going somewhere, trust me, I'm gonna buy more because they're just terrific. This isn't wanting to grab hold real quick. And then this one I went ahead and cut too, and it's the exact same piece. I just did three of them and I wanted to put it at the bottom. 
if I can get it going. This glue should be being nice to me. It's pretty new. And whoops. Let's go this way. How about that? And same thing. It's got metal behind it so I can push down on it a little bit. I'd hate for y'all to have to wait for it to dry, but it, it will help us in the long run if things aren't falling off on me. It is the Ken Oliver mat. Um, absolutely terrific mat. Um, you can see that I've gotten glass glitter on it. Um, what I will say is I would suggest, the only thing I'd say is not to use it with fine glitter. That's hard to get it off. This glass glitter will come off uh, not super easy, but if I got a baby wipe out, it'll pop off. No biggie. But the glass glitter seems I've had a little more trouble getting it off. So that would be, other than that, I mean, it is absolutely fabulous. And you can see, and I should have done this before it said as well as it did, snip, snip it off with your Tim Holtz scissors, and you can see that that is easy to do. And in this case, I'm not worrying about sanding the edges. I'm perfectly happy with it because this is a rustic look. And so I don't, I don't mind if the edges aren't super smooth. Um, no problem at all. So here is our base. And I, that one is just not wanting to stick. I'm going to add a little bit more glue. I can see it coming loose every time I move it. Okay. And let's let that sit while we get started. Okay. I'm knocking everything off. It's funny how when you're making these projects, you don't you think, oh that did that was fast. And then you think, well, but it does take a minute to dry. And you always find out live that it took a little bit longer than you thought it did. Now, let me wipe some of this off. And in fact, I'm going to pick it up and see if I can shake some of it off to start. I'm going to have to vacuum. <laughs> Actually, let's not even do that. Let's just turn it over. How about that? Fresh start. And that is the other thing, too. Like, uh, it's, it's double-sided. It's great for when you use beads. The molds do add so much dimension. Hi, Tiffany. I see people saying, saying hi, but I think I missed you checking in. Oh, I see you. Okay. Now, the uh, the next, actually, I need that over here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to start adding some color. And I'll keep messing with this. This is um, Glistening Waves. It's the color bloom. I use three. I also use the tea stain. These two are my favorite go-to colors. For some reason, I am very drawn to this color of blue. And then I also used a little bit of the Storm Cloud. And all I did was take one of my Prima brushes. You can use any brush you want. And I started adding a bit of color. And let me give you the number. This is Glistening Waves. We're going to use it first. It's uh, 573942. <laughs> okay. Actually, let me get this a little bit wet. I didn't bring a smaller brush over here, but you could use a, a little bit smaller. In fact, I think I did. All right. And instead of, one thing with the paper clay is if you get it, it is paper. So you don't want to get it super wet, but it definitely will hold up to some, some wet. So all I did was start adding a little bit of color. And you're going to see how easy this really is. And then I added a little bit of color on the inside. You can just pull these loomies out of the way. And if you're new and you haven't used the color bloom, uh, you can see that a little bit goes a long way. And it also the bottles are refillable when they get lower, when they get a little low, you can always um, add water to them probably two or three times. And I'm, I'm looking for my flowers because I'm going to, and I misplaced them. I'm also, while I'm at it, I'm going to color everything that I want colored. And so I'm also going to use these flowers. These are uh, 577834 and 577841. These are made out of vellum. I did not use, uh, is, 
Okay, I'm looking at the questions again. The paper clay is not the same as paper mache. Um, it's more of a clay. I, I, don't, I don't really know how I would describe it, but I would say it's more, it feels and works more like a real clay, um, where the paper mache, um, you know, I can't, I really can't think of how to do it, but it's more, it's clay instead of doing the layers. Now, paper mache, I'm not sure if somebody uses it as clay, as clay. I personally haven't. And then, um, no, I did not add gesso on top. Um, you, of course you can, but for this project, it really just wasn't necessary. Okay, and I, I almost forgot our little clock. Well, he needs some blue on him too. Okay, and I'm going to add also a little bit of the color bloom to these two, to all the flowers. Let me get us a smaller brush. And I like to dip when I'm doing this, I like to dip the, the thing in uh, a little bit of water before I start. And these I just want to start getting some color in here. We're going to come back and add even a little bit more. And it's going to all be, yeah, I thought I got off camera. It's all going to be very soft. It's not, I'm not going for anything really dark. Let me show you these. Aren't these pretty? And they're vellum. And this will dry on them. And keeping it really simple, as you can see, I'm not, not being perfect about where I put it. Don't have to be. This one has a few edges. If I had brought my deal, but you can kind of see that I didn't bring, I, I still wish I had that fingernail file in here, but I don't. Um, but you can take off any little bit of edge that's left that you don't want. And get a little bit of blue on everything. Okay, I see y'all talking about, yeah, maybe somebody has used paper clay before. Like I said, I'm like the blind bleeding the blind right now. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put blue on all these. And I'm actually, this is a little bird that I picked up just at Dollar Tree. Um, I know Hobby Lobby and Michaels and pretty much any craft store you can get them. And he has a clip on him. And I'm going to pull it out. Maybe. Okay, get rid of that. And I even added a little bit of blue to his breast. And you can, because I wanted him to kind of fit in. He kind of was a good color anyway, because he kind of has a taupe breast, but adding a little bit of blue to it. Okay, and then same thing with the, uh, oh, and let me tell you what else I'm going to do. I'm going to use ribbons on the inside. So any of this excess, I'm going to drop my ribbons in. And these are going to need a little bit more blue, so I'll go ahead and give them some while I'm sitting here. And I'm going to, instead of wiping up and wasting that, I'm going to go ahead and use it for my, for my ribbons. All right, now tea stain. This is a new bottle of tea stain, so I haven't, there it goes. I haven't sprayed it yet. I was thinking, are you going to spray? <laughs> I thought I was out of tea stain, and I was so excited to find that I had a new bottle. Same thing with this. We're going to just repeat it with the tea stain. And I know that y'all probably can't see really great, but you can see I'm just adding a tiny bit of color. It's funny y'all are saying that you're getting booted. I was having fits the other night, and uh, and I used to not get all the ads, and now I'm getting ads. So I don't know if Ustream is making some changes and. I know in the past when they have, it's just taken a little bit, and then we were back to normal. So here we go. This is, again, the tea stain. I didn't give you all the numbers. Sorry about that. It is 5, or let's see, 573836. And same thing here. Add a little bit and get started with some color. And this is just to start building a little bit. Like I said, we're going to continue adding a bit of color here and there as we go. Let's get myself a little bit more. I 
these flowers even sound neat when I'm using them. I don't know if y'all can hear that noise they're making, but they're just so neat. I thought they were perfect for a winter project. And let's add a little bit here. It's one thing about doing it this way, you have a lot on the table at the same time. Okay, and same thing here. I'm going to use my ribbon for cleanup and add a little bit extra. That way our ribbon will be drying while we're setting everything too. Okay. Oh, and I didn't tell you all what this ribbon is. <laughs> I assume everybody knows what I use, but I know you don't. This is just seam binding uh, from Hug Snug. And it, it crinkles beautifully and it picks up and holds these colors so well too. Okay, let me move these. And last color is the uh, Storm Cloud. And this one is 573768. Now this one I used more as to kind of add some shadowing on the inside. I didn't drag it through. Let me see if I can get it where you can see. I did it more around the edges to give myself a little bit of shadowing. But, here we go. I think it got a shadow in there of its own. <laughs> Without any artistic touch, right? This is not wanting to, that glue's not wanting to set for me tonight. I might should have used a little hot glue on it as well. And then I used it on this too. And this is a very, very soft gray. If you can't see it very well, I'll bring it up close. Got it a little too much right there because I want my blue to still show a bit. But it's really a soft gray. Let me pull it up where you can see. So see how we're getting the color here? We've got a little tea stain, a little bit of our blue. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you can always go back. Like I'm looking at mine and I'm thinking, I think I'd like a little bit, same thing, use your, use your ribbon to clean it up, add a little bit of blue. Wishing I had a tiny bit more there, so I'll go ahead and do it. And let me clean this a bit. If you clean your brush a little bit to it, it helps hold those colors a little better. So, and I did not put any storm cloud on the little clock. I want to do that. I decided it would be easier though to do this all together. And if you can see with this paper clay, remember what I said, don't get it super wet. So you can see that I'm not putting much on any of this. I got a little heavy handed here, but the design is deeper. If you do, make sure that you don't keep manipulating it a lot because you can use a little bit, lose a little bit of that crispness. And then here we go. Okay, so there's our ribbon and our flag. Oh, we got to do storm cloud. Keep forgetting to put that storm cloud. I keep trying to tell y'all something else. There we go. Put a little bit on my flowers as well. And here I'm kind of going to the outside. Whoops, there went the camera. <laughs> Hang on, give me one sec to get y'all back. I've got a big old mess over here too. I think that's close. And here's the one. It's hiding back there from me. Okay. So everything, we're going to set these aside and let them start drying. We are going to have to do a tiny bit of drying to make sure. The vellum flowers, you can give them a little hit with the heat gun, but you do not want to, uh, you don't want to really truly hit them because I think they would probably curl and melt and that may not be a bad thing but it also may not be a great thing it would depend on what you were looking for and so just a little tip I would be a little bit careful with that but these before I attach it I'm going to give it a little bit of a dry because they're they're not going to stick well and that is all that the color uh, it doesn't I wouldn't go so far as to say it truly absorbs it but it it sits on it pretty and it doesn't go anywhere so 
Maybe it really does, but it is like really terrific looking. And I'm going to hold one up close. I'll give one a tiny hit so you can see um, what I'm talking about. Actually, this one has a little more tea stain on it where you maybe you can see. So I'm just, so can you see how it, it sits and it dries? And like I said, it, I don't know if it's truly absorbing or if it lays on top, but it's really beautiful. And it, with the vellum behind it, the color blooms to me are even more beautiful. They really show up so perfectly. But you can see I'm barely not getting real close, barely giving these a little hit just to get the drying process, just to help speed it up so we can use them a little quicker. Okay. So, now, be sure when you're doing this, for one, I have huge hands, but for another, work in, I'm going to work inside, and it's something that I would suggest that you all do, is when you're working with these, work from the back and work your way to the front. Um, I, had fit, I have fits when I try to go back and put stuff in. I mean, of course you can, and I'm going to use a little bit of Fabri-Tac, and I just wanted to have a tiny bit of ribbon up here. I didn't want anything really major going on because I had so much going on at the front. By the way, I didn't tell y'all either. These are just little bows. And we'll trim them how we want them. So let me stick it in there. Let me get my scissors. Might even should have had some, uh, can't think of what they're called right this minute. Tweezers. That might have helped me. And I just am going to stick a couple of bows in there. I think that's what I did before. If not, it's close enough. And I'll move my hand and show y'all here this in a minute. Hold it down. Yeah, like I said, this is a little damp. And I do want to trim these a bit. Because I don't want them piling up. I just want them kind of hanging down in there. So I'm going to give them a little bit of a trim. Let's see, how long is that one? Okay. And bunch them up and they'll finish drying. Like I said, they're not totally dry. I just gave them enough that I hope that they would sit. Okay, so you can see, here we go. Maybe if we turn on the lights, that'll help, right? There you go. So you can see, I just gave myself a little bit of ribbon in the back. And when it's dry, sometimes I'll go back and put a tiny bit of Fabri-Tac on my finger and just barely touch the paper and attach these. And that'll kind of keep them, and I'll do it up close here to the top to where it at least just kind of keeps them hanging where I want. Um, but I can't do that with it being this wet. So you can see it's just adding a little bit of interest there to the back. I'm not liking where that one's hanging. Let's get it right. There we go. I want the little loops on top, not the, not the dangle parts. All right. So the next thing I did was is I started building the inside. And the same thing, oh, and I just remembered I am going to have to grab something real quick. I forgot my cardboard. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. I like to use this foam board when I get it. I would use it to take my photos, and when it gets old and dirty, I use it to cut up to to put behind pictures or what have you. And I'm just going to cut. Should have done this ahead of time. I'm sorry. All right. So just cutting off a piece of foam board. And the bird, I found with the size flowers I used, that it was better if I went ahead and raised it up a little bit. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and now that I think of it, before we add him, I do want to give him, you can see he has a really long tail. And I don't want to have that because it makes it harder to place him. Um, if I had put him forward, it wouldn't have been a problem, but I chose not to. So I want to go ahead and add a little bit of glitter to him. And so to solve that problem, before I add the glitter, I snipped off his tail. So here he is. And let's add a little bit of glitter to him. 
before he goes in because it's like I said again when we start working on the inside of this it's a lot harder to add your details later it's better to add them sooner so let's I'm trying to get didn't bring two things in here either okay and with him I just took a little bit of soft gel and this is let's see 961435 And just touched him a little bit here and there with a little bit of soft gel. Not much at all. I need to clean off. I have a mess going here, y'all. Put a little bit on his head. He needed some sparkle and shine, too. A little bit on his feathers and his breast. And we're going to come back to the glitter for the flowers at the end. And again, this is Sterling. Same thing that was on the roof. And now he has a little bit of sparkle. Isn't that color so pretty? I really love this Sterling. I will tell y'all, I have bought it a few times too. When I love it, I'm scared to death that they'll run out of it. So I keep buying it. Okay. Now, let's clear up some mess here. <laughs> Okay, now what we're going to do is I'm going to glue these three pieces together to give him a base. These flowers are large and they will cover. <laughs> Thank you, Janelle. He is lucky to get a house, but yeah, it was kind of sad to cut off his tail feathers. Okay, so this is just the pieces of foam board with the Fabri-Tac. And I'm going to try to make this where y'all can see. Now, remember, I did not want these to, uh, I'm going to use them to build around. So I'm just going to basically wrap them up again. And I'm purposely going to get some glue on them. And let me put some glue on this. Like I said, this, this thing should be, be this, Fabri-Tac should be being nicer to me. It's a new one. I thought it would be easy. Instead, it's it's not. <laughs> Oops, got it on my hands. Okay. Now, let's see. We're just going to set this over to the side here. And remember, because when we put the flowers in, too, we can also come back and add some more glue or push these in a bit more with the glue. Like so this should have been done ahead. I thought I had done all the, the tedious parts ahead, but I, I missed a couple. And let's go ahead and give him a little bit of glue while we're at it. Sorry, I know y'all can't see that. I'm going to move it again, but let me... I don't want it to slide off. I want that glue to keep setting. And I can already tell we're going over, y'all. I'm so sorry. I'll try to speed it up. Okay. So, and he is going to set right here on top so you can see and I'm going to let him dry a little bit or let him sit there a little bit sorry I'm going to keep him upright but one thing I am going to do is I want to add a little bit of ribbon around him to start this base so I'm going to put one back there kind of in the corner that way we have a base here so I'm going to stick it right in here so just so y'all know and I'll show y'all as I go again So like I said, easier to add it now than later whenever we start getting the flowers in. And tuck it up in there. Hang on. So I'm just, I stuck it down here in the corner and I'm just tucking it in here. Like so. That starts just covering up that base. And I'm saving these little sprigs of ribbon just in case I need to tuck them in later. And it looks like this may have finally stuck the top part. So there's hope there. Okay, same thing with the flowers. We're going to start doing it. And this is just some tape I'm using as a base, just some electrical tape, because it made it with that Lumi on the back, made it a little flatter, so hopefully y'all can see a little bit better as we go. All right, so now we're going to start building the, uh, the flower cluster. And this is uh, these flowers we just did. Oh, wait, I lied. We're going to do, let's see where they go. <laughs> we are going to give it these beautiful 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 things these are called candy gems these are blueberry it's five four nine three three six 
These are an older Prima project product that is another one of those that is fabulous to have in your stash. And there's these are clear, and these are like a real soft blue that like per perfectly matches and gives it just a little bit more sparkle, um, which I love, and still a little bit tiny touch more of blue. Let's see, did I use? Yes, I did use soft gel to attach the glitter to the bird. You could use any of the Prima gels you had, the matte gel. I just used uh, soft gloss gel. I, I do like that shine with the glitter and, you know, for other things I like. Sometimes I prefer the matte gel if I don't want that shine. But this, the whole point was it to be sparkly and shiny. And then so I used these. And let me find. There it is. And I also used, this is a Christmas pig. And let me show you on here. So you can see here's the candy gems. And then I have a little bit of this, this glittery stuff sticking out. And all this is is a Christmas pick. And I am, I'm pretty sure this is a Michaels brand. Um, I'll go into their inexpensive picks at the end of the season and buy bits and pieces. So I'll tell you honestly, I'm not even sure if I bought this this year or last year. But I like to pick up these and uh, things like stems and things like the... Uh, glittery um, leaves. They have some beautiful leaves and so these are perfect just to start gluing here. And I'm going to go ahead and take the little bit of extra time to add the Fabri-Tac that it takes just because that will make it permanent. Even with the glitter on it, the Fabri-Tac will hold this. And I know the hot glue sometimes will It'll hold it temporarily, but it won't hold it permanently. And also, we're going to go ahead and attach this little clock here while we're at it. Got a little glue, a little too much glue on that. And let it start. And it's just going to, oh, I thought I got too much. I didn't. I just got it in the wrong place. We'll start letting that attach. I'm going to hold these and let them grab a little bit. And you can see I'm, I'm not being perfect about where I set it. The general vicinity is good. And then I'm going to cut up. And this, I mean, I did this project. I did the other. And there's even still more pieces of this. So a little bit of this goes a long way, which is nice. And just building our base here. And if you have, I'm sure y'all have probably used Fabri-Tac, but if you haven't, I don't like the way that one's sticking up there. Let's get rid of it. If you haven't used it yet, um, we'll have a little bit of time. <clears throat> it dries really permanently, holds really well, but I like it because it grabs pretty quickly, but there's a little bit of wiggle room if you want to work on your placement. And y'all saw me cut these in half, and I did that because I just wanted to go with this and have a little bit in each size. I mean, in each side, um, and instead of the flowers covering them up, this glue is a mess. Um, instead of the flowers covering them up, I wanted to uh, have them show. So by cutting them in half, I only had to use one, so I have the other one for other projects, and I also, they all get to show, and I like that. And this one I'm going to go ahead and cut off more. I'm going to cut off this excess because I didn't use that part. Let me see. Uh, the molds. The molds not, are not out yet. Um, as you know, it's CHA right now. And I honestly am not sure. And say, so like I said, having a little bit of wiggle room, I'm going to put this one on top. May move that other one too, but I think I'm gonna leave it. Now let's let's switch them out here. I think they'll be prettier popping from behind there. There we go. All right, let's give this just a sec. Um, sorry, it is CHA week, um, so they are going to be released, but I don't think they're actually in the stores yet. And unfortunately, I really don't know the time frame, but I know they're coming really soon. So the wait won't be long.
Maybe I need to use old glue. <laughs> Actually, let's give this one a little bit of hot glue. That'll make it grab. Okay. I'm wanting to speed it up. That'll make it grab real quick. And then, uh, of course, the fabric tac will make it stay. Let's give it all a little bit of hot glue. And I'm just putting this like right by the fabric tac but not mixing it in, which wouldn't be a problem, but just making sure it all grabs hold. Okay, now we're going to do the flowers. And the first one I did was I tucked uh, one inside. And these are still a little damp as well, but I gave it a little bend. It does only come in white, but it's very easy. Um, the paper clay does only come in white, so that way people who maybe watch back know what we're talking about. Um, but as you can see, it's easy to color. I did not try to color it with something else, um, but I want to. I also want to try to maybe put some glitters in the molds. And there's so many things I want to try that I can't tell you all about yet because I haven't done it yet. So. I'm building him a really pretty nest in here. This flower works perfectly. So you can see the placement there. And this is all stuck now. And that's going to be our base. And we're just going to keep building. And let's use, let's just use the same ones we used. And this one, let's go with this big one. This one first. And again, these are pretty tough too. This vellum, you got to love it. And I'm going to go ahead, and he's a little further back than the last one, so I'm going to push this in here a tiny bit, knock that off. And then this one we're going to put up next to it. There goes the glue bubbling again. <laughs> and we're going to stick this one in here. kind of push these up next to one another and have him peeking over. You can see him kind of peeking over. In fact, let's scoot it over just a tiny bit. And what I talked about that wiggle room is he's disappearing back there a tiny bit. So I'm going to go ahead and give him a little scoot. There we go. Now we can see him a little better. And he'll still glue just as well. That, like I said, that's that's really the beauty of the fabric tack is that it, it does give you that wiggle room to for your placement. Okay, and then the other thing, this last flower, because I, I envisioned this sitting in an arrangement or something or sitting on my thing, I'm going to go ahead and add it to the back or to the side. This is really beautiful on the sides with the distressing, and we've done the glitter at the top and all, so that is something that... It doesn't have to have, but I think it's nice looking. And same thing, I'm going to tuck it up here. And then I'm going to add, fill in a couple of little blanks with, whoops, with the bow. Where did I do it that? This additional ribbon I have here. Let's I have never had so much trouble with a glue bottle live before, so sorry about that, you guys. We're going to add a little bit there. And this got a little bit over, so let's give it a push. I'm not going to, I didn't get the hot glue on the stem, just on this, so no problem. But what I said about taking these scraps. We can take them and tuck them in. And I'm just going to give this little fold and have these little edges. But let me trim that up a bit. I like my edges to go sideways or catty cornered or however you want to call that. Not straight. And I'm going to tuck it in here to build us a little bit more interest here. So if something isn't quite where you want it, it's always fixable or movable or keep adding beautiful stuff. You'll be good to go.
Okay, and let's go ahead and give this same thing. Um, this one, I think I'll show y'all. Sometimes you can just do like this. Whoops, that glue. Use some of that excess glue and just give it a little pinch. Yes, I said it right. And here you go. I'm going to tuck it in right in here. There's a little bald spot in here, too. And he's going to, that one's going to need a little bit more of a trim. He's kind of sticking out there. And in the one in the picture, you can see that I took. You can see that all this can lay on the on the counter when it's setting up. So it's really pretty because it kind of looks like it's spilling out of there. It is fiber tack lava. You are so right. <laughs> my my fingernails are definitely going to have to be redone. They are fiber tacked. I don't know, everywhere. <laughs> but that's okay, because that's the wor if that's the worst thing that happens, we're good. Okay, so here is where we're at right now. And then let's do, let me grab this other thing. What did I do? There they are. These are vintage trinkets. And these are number 960322. I love these. Of course, they're flowers, so of course I love them. And what I did was, is there's silver and gold ones in here. I chose to go ahead and just pull out the three gold ones. Pretty sure that's what I did. If it's not, that's what we're doing tonight. So, and then what I did was, is I gave them a little bit of a bend. Whoops, I gave that one a lot of a bend. So instead of leaving them flat, I bent it up a little bit. And that made like almost like a little cup that I'm going to put one of Frank's beads in. And I'm going to go ahead and attach it and let these metal pieces start drying and then we'll tuck the beads in. Then we'll be just about ready for the fine details. And let's see. I'm going with a very similar placement. Actually, I think I like it over on this side better. Very similar placement to what I did before but not exact. Let's see if it'll catch. I've got so much glue on my fingers it's wanting to stick to my fingers not to the project. And then this one. Same thing. Bent it up. Made it into a little cup. Got a little glue. And let me tilt this up so I can see. And I'm going to tuck this one right here. I wanted to show but I also want to kind of build into this little grouping here. I'm going to give this a little bit of different placement. Okay, so can you see that I tucked him up in there? And then this one, this one doesn't bend as well. So let me show you what I do. So let me pull it up close where you can see it. So this one won't bend as well because it's connected. What I like to do is give these a quick snip and these Tim Holtz scissors work perfectly. And so I gave them a quick snip between each of the petals, and then it's ready to go to and bend right into your cup. And I do this all the time with the metals, um, just depending on where I want to put them. Sometimes flat is perfect, and sometimes I like to go here. Uh-oh, this, this flower on the side jumped right off on me. <laughs> okay, now let's give this one. So I, I think I've already told y'all I'm going to be over a bit. I'm sorry. But I do want to show y'all the snowflake paste and how I did it. And the few last little details. This isn't wanting to stick in there at all. Let's see if we can put it here. I'm going to show y'all where I'm putting this. Sorry, it's a little, little difficult. And it's not going at all. Let's put it right in here. Okay, there it's starting to grab. We're going to put it right in here and just give it a tiny bit more detail so you can see where we're at here. We've just got a few of them tucked in and about. And then let me get the beads. These beads are the Memory Hardware Pearls and I always forget, actually I have it written down. This is number 990398. These are Frank's Memory Hardware and you can see there's several colors. I'm using the darker one. It's not really a black, but it works perfectly as a black. 
And so this one's a bit bigger, so I'm going to stick it in the big one. And you can see I'm just tucking it in there, and it has plenty of time to dry. And this is one of those flowers that isn't showing much, but showing a little bit. And I, of course, will be playing with this and manipulating it um, more because I know y'all all do that too. And then here's another. See how the beads are sticking to my nails? <laughs> and one thing I do, I know it's a little bitty tip, but I try to make sure when I hold it that I hold it where the holes are when I'm doing this so that the hole is in the back instead of front and center. So you can see that. And then one more. Let's see if I can find a little bitty one. And these little bitty ones are with this much glue on my hands may be a problem. Yep, stuck to my hands and has the whole front and center. So I'm going to roll that one around. Okay, so that is our entire base. That is all the embellishments. And like I said, you're going to want to do a little tweaking. I'm still not liking this little section here. So I'm going to pop myself in another little twig. And give myself a little bit more there and then you can give some of these a bend and say start building that holding that for just a second so it'll dry and then the other thing I did one other little thing before we go there is the glitter I said we're gonna do the glitter and I'll go ahead and actually what I'm just gonna go ahead and tell y'all I put a little bit of glitter See if I've got that here. Yeah, I do. I'll put it just touch because it just takes about half a minute. I used uh, glossy accents. I'm not meant to have glue today. Of course, this isn't going to work for me. Hang on, give me one sec. Let me stick a pin in it. Just a tiny bit of glossy accents. See if I can get started. Nope. Sorry, nothing like when you're a little behind anyway. I'm trying to get it started. I know I know the stuff is off camera. Well, I can't get it started. But anyway, use some glossy accents and just put, I would use the, the other glue, but we both know how that, we all know how that's been going for me tonight. Actually, here we go. I have some three-in-one here too. Maybe this one won't bubble up and I can put a bit. But you just want to touch it with a little bit of glue. I'm afraid if I used that bottle of fat, yeah, here we go. <laughs> and in these little flowers, glossy accents is much easier to use for this. But just put a little bit near the center. I'm even going to put a tiny bit inside. And on this back flower too. Yeah, this one's running a little bit too. Anyway, we're going to give ourselves just a little bit of glitter to pull that look on down here. And here's our thing. And see how pretty that looks in there? And as you can see, I mean, my glitter's going, I mean, my glue's going everywhere. There, this is not an exact science. Don't overthink it. And a little bit over here. And I'll show you this one that, that y'all even saw get stringy everywhere. See, it's still just stunning. Okay, so that is the total base, even with the glitter. We didn't even skip a step. Now, the other thing I want to show y'all that I love, love, love to use is this is, you may have used it. This is pearlized medium. Boy, I need to clean up. Let's get us some space here so y'all can see. I think we're done gluing, so I think we're good. I told y'all we're going to come, or actually, no, one, one more thing first. Other thing is, this is Old Road. Um, this is a chalk edger, and this is number 891077. And you can see it's a little bit darker gray. And as you can see, this started looking a little bit flat. So what I did was, is I took this, 
and those raised places just here and there I gave myself and I didn't put any glitter here and I did put some I'm looking over it as I do it give myself a little bit of extra detail and you can see how that really makes those details on this paper clay start to pop just having a tiny bit more color I don't know if y'all can see, I don't know if it's as obvious online as it is here, but the change is really dramatic by doing this. In this corner, this edge here too, where it doesn't quite meet, I'll get rid of all that white. Tiny bit on your flowers if you want to. You can put some on your ribbon. I'm going to put some on this flower. It doesn't have quite as much. Okay, now, with the exception of a little glitter, which I forgot to add there, which we're going to put snow there, so it'll be good. Um, this pearlizing medium is really inexpensive. What I love about it is, is it, let me shake it a bit, is it dries, um, or it, it'll hold the color of whatever you use. And so to add some detail everywhere, I took a little bit of that and my glistening waves, again that number is 573-942. And I mixed it in. Oops, wrong brush. And I used just a, here we go, here's my small one. Just a small brush, mixed it in. And you can see what I love about this is, is it, like I said, it'll hold the color. It'll lighten it a tiny bit, but not a whole bunch. And I really love any product that does that. It's an acrylic base, so it dries real fast. And then I'm going to take a brush that's a tiny bit bigger than that that I happened. And what I did was, is I started on the inside of course and just touched all the ribbon just a little bit I'm not going on the paper this will pick up with light a little bit of a silvery tint so you don't want to and I'm hoping y'all are going to be able to see this online it is like the just perfect this glistening waves just goes perfectly so can y'all see how it picks up that sheen and it will stick to this metal and I took it and I touched all these flowers to give myself a little bit more color with a little bit more sheen just another just another step to add get a little much I don't know about y'all use my fingers they're covered in glue anyway so it's all good I even used a little bit on these these picks that I have and just pulled just another little bit of shine in. I put a little bit on here because I had not done anything except add glitter. And this this will make it, you could also, I think, and I just didn't think to do it till now, I think you could very easily use soft gel to get this same look. This is something I have used for so long that I kind of automatically grab it at times. And I'm adding just a bit of blue everywhere and I'll show you all closer whenever I get it done. But I want to try to hurry. We're already over. So sorry. And add a little. And that's what's great about this mat is that I, I literally do work like this. I work straight off this mat. I'll have it laying here and I have the biggest mess going. But it all cleans up so easily at the end. I know y'all were asking about that earlier. So now you can see where I'm getting that sheen. And see on the roof where I'm adding, I'm not going to add any more. We're going to go ahead and move to the snowflake. But where you're adding uh, a little bit of that blue here and there. And that gives that, that lets that color come across and carried across the project. Okay, last thing. Let's get rid of this all together. Because this one is not hard. And look, I wish I could show y'all. But y'all y'all can go look at the picture to see. I can probably show you with my hand. How when it sets, all this will kind of be flowing out of the bird cage. So this will be sitting, you know, on the table or on a stand or whatever you choose to put it on. Last little thing to do. Oh, I did forget a ribbon back here. Let's see where I go. I used all those. We'll put this back there. It does need a little something. I noticed I didn't even look at my project. I just noticed it. Thinking, wait, we need something there. So I've got a little piece of ribbon still. Instead of a bow, we're just going to use a little bit to give us, I think we'll just have it going down. You could always go back and add a bow. Here we go. 
that gives us a little bit of ribbon back there. And I can actually, this is what I was talking about, like touching and getting a tiny bit of glue on your finger and just touching, and then you can place. And if you don't have so much finger glue on your finger, other fingers, you can see you can place it just a bit, and that'll grab hold and take and stay in place. All right, so now we are to the snowflake paste. And this stuff is phenomenal, um, if you can find it. <laughs> I, can't, I can't find what I did with it. Give me one second, y'all. There it is. Okay, let me clean up my brush a little bit. Now this one I like to use a flat brush and a round brush and I'm going to show y'all a little bit. You've, some of you have probably seen it and let me give you the number of this. It is uh, 962-906. I'm old. The eyes are starting to go. I have to like push my whole head back. Camille, I see you love snowflake paste. I was not real sure what to expect. This stuff is amazing. And it truly does glisten. You can see the texture. It's like, I don't know. I, I really can't even hardly describe how much I love this because how easy it is to work with. And you just, I, what I did was I loaded my brush a little heavy. And like this one, it's already has a little drip coming down. So I just took advantage of that and let that be my drip because snow's not perfect, right? And like here... Let's do a little bit more. And so that one, I didn't really get a drip. So what I love about the round brush is, and that's why I wanted to make sure to show y'all, is you put some on it, and if you turn it while you go, you can, I can't do it tonight, of course. I think I may go, I really need a smaller brush. But but you can start building that uh, that drip. So see? And then you can do like a drip on the front. And that's what I did. I just started building the snowflake drips. So it would look like it was like, instead of icicles, we have the snow kind of melting off. And you can spend as much or as little time as you want. But just keep pulling it. Hopefully y'all can see. And I got a little bulge right there. And as usual, I'm using my fingers. Let's see. I don't, this one's a little bit smaller. I was going to say, I didn't bring a small. The smaller paintbrush to do that is a little bit easier. I thought that one would work, but it's not working so hot for me. Let's see. There you go. And that is kind of how I started doing that. And then working my way around and just keeping adding. Let's see. Set it there on that one keeping adding uh, a little bit here and there. I put a little bit on him. And this is one of those things you can keep adding and keep adding. This glow, this this dries truly as a, uh, it truly sparkles. I get, it looks to me like it has a tiny bit of super, super fine. It does not look like glitter, but it has to have something in there that sparkles. But it, I, I, just that super fine glitter is what it kind of looks like to me because it has a sheen at the end. So here I'm just adding, and you can see we've got our snowflake drips. And instead of doing, let's see, let's go ahead. We're already almost 15 minutes over, so I'm not going to put snow, I'm not going to make y'all, I'm not going to wait and do every single one. Um, but I do want to show y'all that same thing on these. If you build it up a little bit, you can start pulling it down and working with it. So you can see that I'm, I'm using way more than I need to get started, but it allows me to get that look of it flowing down. So can y'all see that? So see what I'm saying? This little brush is working better tonight. The other night I couldn't do this one. I, think it, I, think, I don't know about y'all, but there's nights that things go smoothly and times that they don't. So whatever works for you while you're creating is good. And you can keep adding and adding and adding. Uh, I definitely put some on the flowers here and there and 
on the inside and see so just putting a bit here let's see this has gotten so shiny it's kind of hard let me see if I can get it to focus in yeah you can kind of see it in there and see and just keep adding you want a little bit on you don't want to really miss a spot I guess that the what I would say is is make sure that every element because this was out in the snow so every element that you've included needs a little bit of snowflake paste on it whoops drip some right there and actually now that y'all seen how I got the drips I think we'll we'll call that we'll call that good but I'm gonna bring the other one out so I can show y'all all the extra details rather than because y'all seen how I do that now so here I want to show you how we'll do the close-ups how I just kept playing with it till I had the drips and I know that it's impossible but you maybe can see a little bit of how even the snowflake paste shines and you can see that I added the blue to this you can see all the details he's got it on him and then when you look on the inside you can see inside there's even a little bit of snowflake snow um, I didn't put much on the bird in fact I don't think I put any on him because uh, he's in there for shelter I didn't want him snow covered but and you can see on the things any place that you could put snow I put a little bit and you can see here that I've let the snow here and and I want to show y'all it stays I mean I'm not pushing hard it's got some give but this will definitely stay and stay beautiful you would have to like really beat it up so it it dries to a fabulous texture okay thank y'all so much I'm sorry we're over I know I took a little bit of time to to explain things and if you have any questions please please shoot me an email and um, you can find it on my blog at just the um, also if you're friends with me on Facebook you can ask me questions there um, if you're not friends with me on Facebook, I would love to be friends with you on Facebook, so please find me. Uh, it's Robbie Herring, and thanks so much. It means so much to me that y'all are here tonight, and hope that y'all get CHA project products in your hands so soon. Thanks again. Good night.